Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today it's going to be the infamous Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde for the NES. This is... <laughs> this is an interesting game, uh, and it's going to be an interesting playthrough as a result. Uh, I actually first learned how to beat this game a couple weeks ago, uh, prior to doing uh, this recording here, and uh, man, what a trip that was. Uh, I'll try to explain the mechanics as we go through this game and, uh, you know, sort of explain what goes on in this game. It's a very uh, sort of obtuse uh, game on the NES. Uh, it's The mechanics are just very different to anything else that you've probably seen before. The game's also really glitchy, it's really buggy, sometimes you can just die because you clip through a wall or something like that. Um, it can be rather aggravating. Um, so we'll kind of see what happens here in this playthrough and I'll just sort of explain things as we go. Uh, before we kick things off though, uh, uh, as usual, I'd like to give a big shout out to my current Patreon backers, and so they're going to go ahead and just flash right by the screen. So thank you guys for your continued support. Also, thanks to all the recent live stream super chatters and channel members. Thank you guys for your continued patronage as well. Uh, so we're actually already playing the game. Normally, I don't start the game until after the Patreon part, but uh, this is kind of a, a long game and uh, kind of a tedious one. So I figured I would just start, uh, jump right in, and just start walking to the right. Um, Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde has two different. Uh, uh, sort of gameplay modes. You've got the Jekyll mode here, uh, where Jekyll just walks from left to right. Uh, you have to avoid humans, you have to avoid cats, like there's one walking up behind me. Once he goes crazy, uh, he'll actually do some damage to me. Likewise, there will be some dogs we'll have to jump over, things like that. We have to avoid the spiders, and there's a dog right there. Uh, for the dogs, you always want to just jump to the left, and uh, they always run back to the right, and then they'll switch back to the left and go off screen, just like so. And the cats will freak out like this, and then you just want to wait and then jump over them like that. Uh, Jekyll's jump, interestingly, can be sort of controlled in the air. You can't control it backwards uh, in the opposite direction, but you can actually sort of uh, taper it a little bit uh, in the forward direction, which is interesting. Jekyll can also duck, although it doesn't really have a whole lot of uses in this game. Um, so there's also a hide mode. You'll notice at the top portion of the screen, you've got a life bar and then you've got a meter. Uh, on the left hand side is H for hide, on the right is J for Jekyll. So um, once that meter gets depleted um, by taking damage from enemies and whatnot, uh, we turn into hide. And so there we go, we just saw the, our Jekyll and Hyde meter drop a little bit. So again, when it drops all the way, we turn into Hyde, and what happens is Hyde plays through the same stages that Jekyll does, um, and uh, it's just reverse. He goes from right to left instead of left to right like Jekyll is, and it's in sort of this alternate uh, spooky dimension, uh, which is pretty cool. And he's got various attacks. He actually attacks enemies in that mode. Jekyll has a cane, but uh, the cane is only used to destroy bugs. There are some flying insects later on in the game uh, that are just a nuisance, and um, so with Jekyll's cane and uh, you timing that right, uh, you can get rid of the uh, the bugs. So you'll see me use it probably a couple times in a playthrough, but it's not really something that um, you know I mess around with too much. Uh, so these bomb guys, these guys in purple that drop the bombs. Um, in the early stages of the game, the first couple of stages, you can actually just continue to hold right and the bombs won't actually hurt you. Now the hitboxes for the bombs seem to vary uh, as you go go along uh, or continue along in your journey. So uh, by stage 3 or stage 4, uh, what I'm going to be doing is triggering the bombs and then walking to the left uh, to avoid the bombs. If I try to walk just straight past them, it just won't work. Uh, you've got these guys down here, these grave diggers, uh, you know, spitting out dirt from the ground or kicking out dirt. Uh, so we have to try to avoid those. I don't really care that much. Um, uh, if I turn into hide, it's not a big deal. We basically have to turn into hide at uh, uh, some point in this game. It's it's pretty much mandatory. Uh, you know, with all the uh, the hits you're gonna take, but also to get the best ending, you have to turn into hide, and you have to do something on the final stage that I'll explain once we get once we get there. That's gonna be a l little ways off, but we will we will touch on it. We are going for the best ending, or the true ending, I should call it. Uh, you do have two endings in the game. Both endings are actually good, but uh, you know the true ending is the one where you know you're probably not going to figure it out on your first time playthrough. You'll probably need a walkthrough or do what I did and watch a video that explains uh, the mechanics and whatnot. I had watched a uh, review of this game from many many years ago, and the fellow had talked about the alternate ending, and that's how I learned about it. Um, so yeah, these first two stages here are actually pretty basic. They're not really too difficult to deal with. Um, you know, like these dogs, whenever you see a dog, just wait for them to start running. I actually ran into his face, or walked into his face. Jekyll can't really run. 
but you always want to just wait. Uh, dogs will just start lunging at you. And they'll always run to the left, and then they'll run to the right again, and then they'll they'll bolt back to the left off the screen, just like so. And unfortunately, that cat was there at the same time. There's a lot of randomness in this game, as far as uh, whether enemies get triggered or whether an enemy appears on the screen. It just seems to be fairly randomized, and um. You know, like just coincidentally, I had that cat freak out behind me, and I also had to deal with the dog, so um, that was tricky. So there's another mechanic I haven't touched on, but again, you go through these levels with Jekyll, um, but when you turn into Hyde, Hyde has to go through the exact same stages again, just in reverse. Uh, so the you know the the levels are basically mirrored, and uh, Jekyll will go, or sorry, Hyde will go from right to left, and. Um, now, since you both characters are playing the same stages, uh, Hyde can actually cross Jekyll's path, and if that happens, it's just instant game over. You'll see a, a bolt of lightning strike you, and I'm gonna go this way instead of walking past the bomb guy because of that dog. And, uh, yeah, you can see how large those explosions can be because there was a massive gap between me and the explosion and I still took a hit. It wasn't the dog, it was, it, it was the bomb, so... Uh, we should be getting close to the end of this level, though. I think there are five or six stages in this game. Uh, again, the first couple are pretty easy to get past. They're really not very troublesome at all. So, you know, we'll probably have ourselves a fairly smooth run here for the first couple stages. And uh, this third stage is where things start to heat up a little bit. So, you're probably saying to yourself, if you never played this game before, you're like, Austin, this game looks really dull. And it actually kind of is. It actually is a very... <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty boring game, to be honest with you, um, when you're playing as uh, as Jekyll. Um, when you go into the hide mode, the game is a little more interesting, but it's still not, you know, super fast-paced. We're not talking like Mega Man or Ninja Gaiden or something like that. Um, it is still a plotting experience. Um, but, you know, what's interesting about this game is that it's got some very unique mechanics that uh, I, I don't really know if uh, any or many other games, uh, you know, share the same elements that... Uh, some of the same design uh, philosophies that this game does. So what you could do here with uh, Jekyll, oops, I keep calling him Jekyll, but we could do here with Hyde. Uh, technically he is Jekyll, because they are the same person, if you know Jekyll and Hyde Lord, lore. Um, what you can do is you can punch. I don't really ever punch in this game. Uh, what you want to do is press up and attack, and uh, he'll throw out this blast, and uh, you can only have one projectile on the screen at once, um, and what you do is you shoot enemies with it, and as you kill enemies, uh, your Jekyll and Hyde meter will fill back up. Uh, occasionally, enemies will drop coins, as you see, and uh, these coins can actually be used to pay off these uh, fat singing ladies that we'll run into. We'll probably run into one on this level at the very least. Um, but with Jekyll here, I actually took a hit with a bomb, and what I was trying to do is actually go into this door. And it seems like the, uh, the hit detection on this is a little weird. You have to be at the doorknob to, to go in. And uh, what happens is Jekyll goes in for a short period of time, and then uh, he can avoid objects uh, outside of the house. So you go in, he stays in for about two seconds, and then... Um, and then uh, it just kicks them right back out. So it's actually pretty useful at certain points in the game. So like I avoided that previous bomb um, by going into the uh, the house. And also later on in the game, there will be some barrels that are well barreling down the uh, the street in the city level, and uh, you can use uh, doors to uh, avoid those as well. You'll see me do that later on in the game. So uh, here are some bugs like I was talking about earlier. You can try to you know hit them with your cane. Uh, nothing too special there. Um, I did want to actually, uh, before I continue to go on, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, a friend of mine here on YouTube and Twitch. He goes by Lucha Gem on Twitch, and he goes by uh, Diamond Long Plays on YouTube. So I'm going to post a link to his channel in the description. Uh, definitely go check him out. He does uh, dedicated long plays. He actually speedruns uh, Jekyll and Hyde, so I've actually learned quite a few strategies from him. And uh, he uh, hopped into my Twitch stream a couple times while I was practicing and gave me some good tips. Like one really interesting tip he gave me the other day um, was that when there are bomb guys on the screen, uh, human characters will go crazy. So there will be some levels where humans are just constantly running at you. And when they run at you, they do damage when they touch you. And it's very frustrating, very difficult to avoid. And um, it's the bomb guys being on screen is what's triggering them to go crazy. Um, so when you see the bomb guys appear, you'll you'll immediately know that humans will start, you know, flying across the screen at you. Um, 
which will, uh, for one, deplete your health, and it'll also deplete your Jekyll and Hyde meter. So, yeah, he gave me many tips like that. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Lucha Gem on Twitch and Diamond Lung Plays here on YouTube. Again, go check out his channel in the uh, description box. So if you like dedicated lung plays. Um, so I'm trying to think of other things to talk about. Here's the fat lady I was talking about earlier. And unfortunately, I don't think I have enough coins to pay her off, so I'm going to try to just walk past her her notes, her musical notes. And uh, it, she's a little difficult to get past because uh, she's just, you know, the notes that fly out are just completely random. There's no rhythm or rhyme to them. Um, so sometimes you could just get, uh, you know, the bad luck of the draw, and, uh, and uh, you'll just not be able to get past her. What happens is you'll end up, a lot of times, getting turned back into hide, and then... Um, uh, when you come back out uh, and turn back to Jekyll, um, any object on the screen, any enemy that was there, and that bug just came out of nowhere, any enemy that was there will be uh, gone. Um, so there is actually a benefit to turning into hide. And there we go. So you'll notice that the humans are running now because the bomb guy was on the screen. The humans won't really do much to you. Um, it's just when the bomb guys are on the screen. So... Um, now, there are the little kids, they've always got slingshots in their hands, and they're pretty annoying to deal with. Uh, so you can try to just jump over their, um, you know, their projectiles. Uh, so whenever you see one of these kids uh, nearby, you need to watch out for him, because he's probably gonna, you know, use his slingshot at you. And that was actually kind of crap right there. I, uh, <laughs> you can see that the, uh, the hit detection in this game is not that good. Um, the hitboxes are either massive, or it's just glitchy, or... There will be a huge discernible gap between you and an enemy, and you will still take a hit. It's just one of those kinds of games. It's very frustrating to deal with. Um, the frustrating part is that uh, when you lose all your health, you get a game over. And you have infinite continues in this game, but you always go back to the very beginning of the level that you're on. So what's happened to me is... I, she didn't... Wow, that was weird. Okay. She didn't sing at all. I mean, she sung, but no notes came out. So that was just interesting. Jekyll and Hyde is an interesting game because I, like... You know, every run is almost different from, like, the previous one that you've done. Like, I've never seen that fat lady not shoot out notes like that. Uh, and so, you know, I, yeah, the game is interesting um, from that perspective where... You know, there is a lot of different things that can happen during a playthrough, or a lot of things that won't happen during a playthrough, and it's, uh, it makes for an interesting experience on, on repeat plays, that's for sure. So we have more bugs here, and, uh, let's go ahead and just turn back into hide. Um, so, fortunately the bugs don't really deplete your health, uh, I don't, don't think they deplete your health, uh, I believe it just depletes your, uh, hide and jekyll meter. And, uh, so that basically puts us in the hide mode with, uh, almost the full health bar. And the, the reason that's important is that I find it's easiest to actually die in, um, you know, in Hyde's world. And, uh, you know, the enemies do a lot of damage, they can be fairly dangerous, you've got these floating spiky balls up top, uh, just like so. They always shoot out, uh, sort of a spread of projectiles. And uh, if you die as Hyde, you got to go back to the very beginning of the, st of the stage, both with Hyde and Jekyll. So, and don't mind me, I feel like I'm feeling very stuffed up right now, um, which is kind of bad. Uh, I don't like when I do Let's Plays, <laughs> and partway through the recording, my nose starts to stuff up, and I just, I feel congested, and I sound congest congested, so um, I apologize for that if you guys are noticing it. So, okay, so we're back here. And uh, let's go ahead and just move left. Don't want to run into that bomb. And you can see how these bugs are pretty annoying. And uh, But we should be towards the end of this level, fortunately, which is good. Um, we're actually making pretty good progress, but I also don't want to jinx myself. The last time I said that, when I was playing this game, um, I ended up just... The whole run just went completely downhill by this point in the game. And um, I had to redo these levels multiple times. It's very frustrating. So, as far as I'm aware, um, and people uh, that are familiar with this game, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's really much else in this game in terms of, like, uh, background interaction or anything like that. Like, there was that water statue in the background that was uh, shooting out water. Um, don't think you could do anything with that. Um, and I really don't think, aside from the doors, there's anything else you can do. Now, interestingly, in the Japanese version of the game, there are actually a couple of extra levels and a couple of doors you can go into um, and give money 
to people to get your health back, but apparently they can also steal your money, so um, the Japanese version of this game is actually uh, a little more interesting in that regard, and I do want to play through it sometime, and um, I will most likely uh, try to do that sometime this October. Uh, it is actually October, um, as of uh, this video going public on YouTube. It's not October, actually, when I'm posting it to Patreon a week early, but... Um, Maybe, uh, maybe I'll try to revisit, uh, the Japanese version of this game sometime this month uh, on YouTube. I think that could be interesting. So I do have enough money to pay off the fat lady, so we'll go ahead and just do that. Fortunately, I got past her without, uh, too much issue. And, uh, unfortunately these guys are annoying me. You can see my, uh, Jekyll and Hyde meter is depleting. But, again, this all is just fairly random in terms of, you know, um... It's just all very random in terms of, like, where, like, that guy, um, that hunter was, uh, shooting down birds, and, uh, where the birds come down just seem to be completely random. It just, there doesn't really seem to be much rhythm or rhyme to it. Sometimes they'll just land right on top of your head, other times they'll land behind you, other times they'll land significantly farther ahead of you. Again, there's just no rhythm or rhyme to it. And, uh, there might be another fat lady up here. Maybe. Maybe not. Let's see. Oh, back into hide. And that's fine. I don't mind going and switching into hide uh, as long as I've got a full health bar. Because, again, it's easier to die on the hide stages than it is on the Jekyll stages. Uh, enemies are much more dangerous. Uh, you actually lose a lot of health here very quickly if you're not careful. And um, you can also, again, get glitched out and get pushed through uh, walls and then just die instantly. So one thing you'll see me do in this game is when I'm on stairwells, I don't let Hyde just jump down, or not just jump down, but just fall straight down. Because what happens is you can actually clip through the floor and uh, you just die instantly. It's uh, really awful to have happen, and it's happened to me a bunch of times in this game. And um, also, if you're next to a stairwell uh, or next to a step, uh, getting hit by an enemy will clip you through the step as well. So you can end up dying uh, just by clipping through the step. So I really want to switch back to uh, Jekyll very quickly if I can, and I should be able to. There we go. Because we're actually near the end of the level with Jekyll, and if I die as Hyde, Jekyll goes all the way back to the very beginning too. Um, but even though I took some uh, took some hits there, uh, I did get some coins, so I can try to pay off this fat lady. And this is going to be a pain, as you can see. These notes are just completely random. And there we go, we paid her off. Good. So this game has a tendency of uh, building up on previous concepts. So they introduce the fat lady, they introduce the uh, the hunter, uh, and whatnot. And uh, you know you have to deal with those guys, uh, you know, uh, separately. Um, but then later on in the game, they stack them together, you know, to increase the difficulty of uh, getting past them. Uh, clean and free. So, uh, Jekyll and Hyde is... <laughs> it could be such a, a tedious experience. Uh, I'm, I'm glad I've learned the game, because now I understand, like, what the game is all about. I understand, sort of, uh, the hate it gets. Um, I don't hate the game. Um, I definitely don't hate the game, but, man, I, I can't see myself revisiting this anytime soon. Um, outside of, you know, um... You know, for YouTube reasons. It, you know, aside from YouTube reasons, I probably won't go back to this game anytime soon. Um, but I'm glad to say I've gotten through it. I'm glad to say I, I understand how it works now. Uh, it is quite an interesting game, um, you know, to that degree. And I'm gonna get hit by that bomb, and this is actually really, really bad. So, I, I shouldn't have done that. I should have walked backwards. And what's gonna end up happening is we're probably gonna end up dying here, and then having to do um, the Jekyll section all over again. Uh, so I made a big mistake there by by running into that bomb. I thought I could just get right past it, but I didn't. Now this is a good part to spawn because these little guys here, they have a tendency of giving you a lot of your meter back, which is nice. Uh, another thing ab about dying in this game is that uh, you will actually uh, lose all of your coins as well. So I'll have to try to get past the fat ladies again. Um, without uh, any coins, so that could be a problem, unless I get lucky here. Oh, I got so lucky. Very, very lucky. Oh, man. Very, very lucky. Now, you don't get all of your health back when you turn back into Jekyll, um, but you do get a significant portion of it back, so there we go. Um, we got about two-thirds of it back, which is nice. 
And uh, so hopefully we're towards the end of this this level because it's very uh, very frustrating to have something like that happen where uh, you almost die uh, right at the end of the level that you're on. So. Yep, and that's the end. So once the screen stops scrolling, you know you're at the end of the level, and then you go right to the next one. So now I don't feel too bad. If I had died right here, no problem, because I didn't really, I wouldn't have really lost any progress. Let's go ahead and trigger this bomb, play it relatively safe, just like that, and I got hit by the bird's poop. There's a lot of bird poop in this game, I don't know uh, <laughs> what the developers were thinking, um, but yeah, it is a thing in this game. If you ever wanted to play a game where you got, you know, crapped on by a bird flying uh, in the sky, then Jekyll and Hyde is for you. So, you know, these bugs can be a little irritating as well, but again, they don't really do a lot of damage. Uh, they're just annoying. That's pretty much it. So, uh, again, one other thing I can do is just intentionally take damage uh, with, uh, with, uh, by the bugs, and then turn into Hyde, and then, um, intentionally go into Hyde's mode and, and come back out. When I come back out of Hyde modes and I turn back into Jekyll, all the enemies on the screen are gone. Um, and, uh, so the thing is, I do have, because I want to get the better ending in the game, or the true ending, um, I do have to play as Hyde. So, what happens is, uh, there's a city level, which is actually going to be the next level for Jekyll for us. Uh, so we're actually at getting close to, well, I'd say the end of the game, but the thing is, with the end of the game, I have to get Jekyll, not Jekyll, oh man, I'm so dyslexic today. Um, I have to get Hyde to the city along with Jekyll, and so, uh, we're probably only on, I think, the second stage with Hyde, so he still has at least three or four levels that he has to play through. Uh, so turning into Hyde is gonna be mandatory anyway. And, ooh, that was close. I actually clipped through the stairs but managed to jump up. Uh, if I didn't jump up, I would have died instantly. Um, so that was actually really close. Very, very close. Yeah, so in the city, you know, what I had explained earlier is if uh, Hyde crosses paths with Jekyll at any point in the game, um, yeah, Hyde will get struck down by a lightning bolt, um, and uh, it'll be instant game over, you'll have to do the, uh, the whole level over again, and... Um, but uh, there's actually a twist in the city, so there's actually uh, rooftops you can go onto with Hyde, and so... Uh, Hyde will end up completely avoiding Jekyll's path, so he'll technically cross paths with Jekyll, but not on the same um, not on the same level, and uh, so he'll be above Hyde or above Jekyll, and uh, he'll, he'll basically walk over Jekyll's head. And then um, there's a sort of a secret final boss there that you fight with Hyde, and uh, it's an interesting concept. So you know you're taught never to cross paths with uh, Jekyll as Hyde. Um, but, uh, to get the best ending, you actually have to, but there's a twist, you know, Hyde goes over Jekyll's head on the rooftops. And then, goes to an alternate stage that, uh, Jekyll doesn't experience, and, uh, he fights a different boss there. So it's pretty cool, it's, it's interesting, to say the least. And look at how large that bomb's blast was. Fortunately, it didn't do a lot of damage to me, uh, pretty much no damage, actually, it just sort of annoyed me a little bit. Um, so the bomb blasts in this game are, they could be very difficult to deal with and uh, very tedious, um, and very unpredictable. Every time you see a bomb guy, basically your game stops uh, in these later parts of the game. You know, you see a bomb guy, you gotta walk backwards, and this bug just will not... just not go away. This is like one of the bugs, there was a bug flying around in my game room um, last week, and uh, I kept swatting at it and swatting at it, it was like a gnat or something like that, and um... And it just would not go away. Um, it was so irritating. I was on stream too, going crazy. Um, and that's what that bug is like uh, <laughs> in Jekyll and Hyde. Okay, so yeah, these guys again, you know, projectiles from guys like these are just completely random as well. They go very far too. Like, look at how far that went. I'm gonna take a hit here, not a big deal. Um, I do kind of want my meter to, to deplete a little bit as well because one nice thing about, you know, going into Hyde and then coming back to Jekyll is that uh, you get your health back. And so it sort of uh, is a way for me to, uh, to manage my health. And that dog, I've never seen that. I've never been able to jump over a dog like that. Uh, that was very interesting. So again, like I said, there's so much that's random in this game that, uh, you know, one playthrough will n by no means be anywhere close to identical to another playthrough. It's, it's very interesting in that regard. 
And you've heard me say it a lot, but I think Jekyll and Hyde is a very interesting game. I can't really say it's a fun game, <laughs> so unless you just want a game knocked off the list, uh, you know, you just want to have a, a, a notoriously difficult game, you know, as a, a notch under your belt, um, they definitely try it, but it's definitely the kind of game where uh, it's, uh, it is something, it is something alright. And there we go. So we're turning into Hyde. Not a big deal. We're actually making good progress on this level with Jekyll. Uh, fortunately, not a lot has happened on that level. Now, when you're playing as Hyde, you can't go into houses either. Something to something just to note. Uh, sometimes you got uh, little platforms here on these window sills, uh, but uh, not, there aren't many instances on uh, the Hyde stages where you can do that, where you can jump on the window sills. Uh, so what I like to do with this, uh, these flying spiky balls, uh, I like to just try to get back and then use my shot just like that you'll notice that it always uh, sort of curves around and uh, so you're almost guaranteed to hit them if you time it right now using this uh, attack with with hide is uh, it does take some getting used to because again you can only have one projectile on screen at once it goes down at a sort of uh, you know a slope a slanted angle and uh, so it can be difficult to get used to attacking enemies with it. It's not like a, a traditional, you know, action platformer where your shots will always go like, you know, perfectly horizontal to the left or right. Uh, it doesn't work like that. And if you get uh, closer to one side of the screen or, or, uh, or the other, uh, the shot's trajectory will change as well. It'll loop around and do all these crazy things, all these crazy patterns. So. Um, what I like to do is just not mash the button or anything like that. I like to just wait and then just time my attack and just uh, intentionally hit the enemies. Well, intentionally. Um, really try to uh, work with my aim on uh, with hide. Um, because there's nothing like missing an attack um, or like missing an, an, an enemy and then uh, you know getting getting hit by the enemy as a result. And uh, enemies can do a lot of damage when you're playing as Hyde, uh, so they can be very difficult to deal with. And these bugs are really, really annoying me on this playthrough. You know, funny enough, these bugs have annoyed me more than anything else. Uh, normally it's the, the opposite. The bugs don't usually pose much of a threat when I play this game. It's most of the other enemies that are threatening, like these bomb guys. So you've got this bomb guy with all these bugs, you know, floating around. Um, so, you know, again, talking about that mechanic where enemies just start, they start stacking enemies together. Um, and now we have a fat lady combined with a dog. So I have to wait for the dog and then jump over the dog just like this. But yeah, overall the bugs have actually been uh, the most tedious enemies to deal with on this playthrough. It's actually very interesting. And wow, look at that. We got through this level already. This game is trying to be really kind to me. Why are you being nice to me, game? Why? You've never been nice to me at this point. I am, I am confused. Why are you doing this game? I'll take it though. I'll take it. So I'm gonna try to go into here just like that and probably come out and take a hit, turn into hide. It's completely okay because I need to get hide to the city now. This is as far as we're gonna go with Jekyll. I mean, we're gonna go a little bit farther into the city, but the goal now is to constantly turn into hide to get him to the city. Um, so he can fight the uh, the final boss and once you fight the final boss all the enemies in the game disappear and then Jekyll can just uh, Can walk to his end destination So I didn't touch on it uh, at the beginning But uh, the the thing about this game is or the sort of the concept behind this game is Jekyll is going to get married and uh, He's walking along to uh, to go get married. He's walking to the city to uh, to get married and um, and uh, so uh, you know, the end destination is Jekyll getting married. It doesn't matter whether you uh, get the alternate ending or not, Jekyll gets married in both of them successfully. And, um, but uh, the game is uh, a lot easier if you do this, uh, this alternate route I'm uh, thinking of or talking about on this playthrough. Um, where you get to see a final boss, you also get a, uh, a better ending, per se, or so to say. So, um, but yeah, so Jekyll is in the city now, he's at his destination, he just needs to get married now while uh, dodging Donkey Kong style barrels. These barrels actually do a lot of damage to you, they're very annoying. Um, so, and this is okay, getting hit by the bomb is okay, sometimes the bombs won't actually do any damage to you, it's really weird, uh, it's very very weird, but the barrels more often than not do damage. And I'm getting a bad pattern with these barrels right now. 
I, and so the thing is, I just don't want to die, because if I die, then uh, Hyde has to do his section over again, too. Uh, so we've made decent progress with Hyde on his stage. Um, and I'd actually rather get hit by a bomb than get hit by these barrels, because if you can actually sort of distance yourself enough with the bombs um, to uh, have it like deplete your your Jekyll and Hyde meter but not deplete your health meter it's a little tricky to um, to predict but uh, whether whoa he actually just slipped through the floor I hope I don't slip through the floor okay good that was a little weird um, but yeah what I like to do is uh, just get hit by the bombs um, and be so far away to where my meter depletes a little bit but not my health meter and uh, so I do want to get uh, I do want to get all my uh, I do want to get past this successfully, not die, get my health back so I can uh, grind out on uh, this section again. So I don't, you know, what you can do on uh, the hide sections is you can actually intentionally avoid enemies. I don't really recommend it because you can actually put yourself in a bad situation where um, the only enemies on screen don't really give you any health back or, or build your meter back up, not health back. Um, so like these uh, these floating spiky balls, they don't usually give you your meter back. It's like these little hoppy guys, uh, these little guys hopping on, along the bottom of the screen. They'll give you your meter back. And what I like to do is get my health back as Jekyll, and then grind my Jekyll and Hyde meter back down while keeping uh, a high health bar, and then intentionally turning back into into Hyde. I know it's convoluted. It's so hard to explain, uh, but there we go. That was perfect. I wanted to. Um, get hit by a bomb just like that and not lose health and again It just seems like a complete crapshoot whether you actually lose health or not, but it seems to be more consistent um, If you stay relatively far away from the bomb so kind of like this and I'm gonna jump well I was gonna try to jump anyway So there's actually a section we can use to uh, to grind out and It might be this section right here actually you notice that there's a bomb guy just constantly spawning So when we come out uh, of the hide mode now and we go back to Jekyll um, I should be able to take advantage of that bomb guy just constantly spawning in without having to deal with the, the barrels So we'll just kind of see what happens there So we got lots of coins, but the thing is coins are pretty much useless from this point on um, you know, so we have no reason to to get coins. I do wish coins uh, served more of a purpose in this game. And again, they do serve more of a purpose in the Japanese version, um, but not that much more of a purpose, considering you can... <laughs> they're mainly there to get stolen, apparently. You can occasionally have some health restored from what I believe... I believe Diamond and, and Lucha said that, but uh, there's also a great chance that your, your coins will also get stolen from you, so... People are real dicks in this game, by the way. Um, but apparently, uh, the people are being controlled by uh, this boss we're going to fight at the end of this city. And so there we go. Uh, no, no barrels, fortunately. So this is a great spot to just stay at. We're going to stay here and just uh, get hit by these bombs over and over and over again. So again, the goal is to constantly turn into Hyde and get Hyde to the city. And Hyde's going to jump along the rooftops and end up uh, above, I think, above the church that you get married in. And uh, he, will, he will fight a boss there. And now, you can actually try to get to the end of the city with Jekyll, um, and, but apparently it's very, very difficult to do so. I've actually never done so. Uh, I've always gotten the, uh, the true ending, so to say. And, um, and uh, so that's my goal in this playthrough as well, since uh, some people don't know it exists. So, you know, I definitely want to show off the game um, to its fullest. So, uh, gotta get that best ending to do so. But uh, one of these days, what I'll do is I'll probably revisit this game, not on YouTube <laughs> as a follow-up Let's Play, but I will revisit it on my own time, maybe on Twitch or something like that, where I try to get, I try to go through the city um, uh, with just Jekyll and I just ignore the hide portions. So that could be interesting. I, I do want to actually see my way to uh, the end uh, that way, just to see what happens to see what the rest of the city is like uh, as Jekyll. So apparently it's it's quite challenging. And that was actually a little risky there. That guy could have uh, clipped me through that stair. And then again, when that happens, Jekyll falls to the floor, he falls to the ground down below, and then he dies instantly. It's very, very frustrating. Um, I had a really good run going uh, last week on Twitch, and... Um, 
you know, my good run was ended by, uh, by an enemy just clipping me through the floor. Uh, it was very frustrating, and that was, you know, one of the aspects, uh, the core aspects of frustration, um, the core <laughs> sources of frustration, I should say, when I was learning this game. Okay, good. That was very close. My, my health was very, very low there, but I think we're actually nearing the end of this level with Hyde as well, which is good, so... And let's hope we can turn back into Hyde and not lose too much health trying to do that in the process. But yeah, Jekyll and Hyde is a very glitchy game, and interestingly, we haven't uh, encountered many actual graphical glitches on this playthrough. Um, I have a couple clips from my Twitch archive where um, we come out of Hyde mode and the entire screen is discolored. And we've also gone into the Hyde mode, also with a very discolored screen. Um, it's very interesting. The game is so buggy and glitchy that um, there are so many um, just just bugs and glitches to to discover. So we can also go inside this uh, this building as well. It's not necessary, but again, it is a mechanic. It's good uh, a good mechanic to know actually because it is useful at specific parts in the game. So here we go, we're about 35 minutes into this playthrough, and, you know, overall we've actually had a very smooth playthrough. I haven't died yet, which is, this is the first time I have played this game and gotten so far without dying, so that is interesting. And these ladies are actually kind of creepy. Um, the music changes, and then they turn into these uh, snake-looking things. And, um, very interesting. The game can be creepy at times, uh, which is why I'm doing this in October. Um, it is, uh, can be a spooky game, and, uh, it's definitely one of the things it has going for it. I, I do have a major soft spot for, you know, spooky games, uh, from the 8-bit era. There's just something about them. Games like Jekyll and Hyde, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, um, Friday the 13th, stuff like that. Uh, Uninvited, Shadowgate, uh, there's just something about those games. Well, some are obviously better than others, that's for sure. I can definitely say that much. But uh, there's definitely something about the uh, the spooky 8-bit vibe that uh, just resonates with me. So, okay. Okay, very good. Man, that did a lot of my meter and uh, barely took away any health. And this is actually really good because we're getting towards the end of that level with, uh, with Hyde. And then, then I believe we go to another level with Hyde and then we end up as at the city. And then we can try to... We, can try to beat the game. Yeah, so this should be the end of this area with Hyde. We uh, turn back in the Jekyll right at the very end here. And there's a bunch of these guys. I actually died here once. Uh, talk about a kick in the nuts. Uh, dying right at the <laughs> right when the screen stops scrolling. I had to do the entire level over again, both with uh, you know Hyde and Jekyll. And uh, so what we'll do here is we'll just try to take our time. Try to get as much health back as we can. These guys are very tricky to deal with. You have to hit them in the head. And uh, they do take multiple hits, at least three hits. And uh, But if you time your attacks just right, you can actually do one attack and then another right uh, afterwards. And you can get a, a nice, quick two hits. And there we go. So back to Jekyll. So we're still grinding out on the bombs. Now, if I did get a game over, Jekyll goes back to the very beginning of the city as well, which in and of itself isn't usually a problem, but the problem is you have to deal with the barrels again, which means you run the risk of having low health when you turn back into hide. But on this part right here, I don't have to deal with the barrels. I can just, I just deal with these bomb guys over and over. They just constantly spawn in. And I'm gonna jump a little bit, just wanna make sure I'm out of its uh, range so I don't, you know, have my health get depleted. The meter depletion is what I'm going for here, not health depletion. Because I want the hide sections to be as easy as possible. Um, you know, once I die and get a game over, um, that's where your run really starts to go downhill. You know, as long as you can keep your health bar up, um, you know, you, you run a much uh, lower risk of dying in the hide levels. And so these uh, these green mask looking things, those are that's basically what the final boss is. It's just a red version of those guys, and it just constantly spawns in on on uh, the screen. You guys will see once we get there in a little bit. Do you notice I'm just timing my attacks, I'm playing relatively safe here, and there we go. 
Back to Jekyll. Now we're going to have to grind back out to turn back into Hyde. You know, one thing I wish you could do is control whether you can switch back to Jekyll or not. Like, fill the meter up all the way and then just stay as Hyde until you choose to, uh, choose to no longer be in that dimension. I think that would be nice, but, you know, it would definitely cut back on some of the grinding that you have to do. So, we're basically at the point of the game where Jekyll is just going to be doing this for the rest of the playthrough. And now we're back to Hyde. You know, so we had to grind out there a little bit just to go back to doing what we were already doing, so... Um, yeah, I do wish there was uh, some refinement there. Um, but it's okay. It is what it is. So, yeah, I'm just curious, if you've uh, stuck around to this part in the playthrough, let me know if you've experienced this game before. And let me know if you've actually learned how to play it yourself. Um, definitely interested. And what I'm also really interested about uh, is if people actually played this back in the day and actually figured it out. I never knew anyone that had played this back in the day. Um, I remember seeing the box, and I remember seeing uh, it in magazines and whatnot, but I never actually played it myself. I had never rented it from the video store. I never knew anybody that had rented it from the video store. If they did, they never told me. Um, <laughs> maybe even back then, people didn't want to let others know that they had played this game or experienced it. Um, but it always looked interesting to me in magazines, it, you know, because of the spooky vibe. Again, I always liked the, uh, the spooky vibe of some of these 8-bit uh, titles. So yeah, if you had experienced this back in the day, let me know. I'm very curious. And we might actually be... Wow! We're... <laughs> okay, we're at the city already with uh, with Hyde. But we're going to unfortunately have to uh, switch back to Jekyll here in a minute. Because our meter's going to get filled up. There we go. And unfortunately, I think we just glitched out. Ooh, yeah, yeah, we floated up, we glitched out. As long as it doesn't kill me, that's all I care about. Just don't kill me. Okay, good. I thought it was gonna kill me. <laughs> I thought the game just freaked out there for a second. Look at all those coins, too. Jekyll's gonna be able to go on a nice nice honeymoon after his, uh, his marriage. So... I know I would get as far away from this city as I can- as I could. That's for sure. Okay. So this actually puts us in uh, decent shape as well. Uh, so what's going to happen is uh, once we turn into Hyde, he's going to jump on the rooftops. And then um, we're going to have to avoid uh, endless pits. There are going to be a bunch of enemies we have to deal with. Lots of uh, floating spiky ball things that come in from behind. And there we go. Good. Okay. I was worried we were going to glitch through the floor or something like that. Because again, that is something that happens in this game. And it is uh, very frustrating when it does happen. We have to jump there, jump up here, and then this is a checkpoint for Hyde. And these guys are very annoying to deal with as well. And what I want to do is make sure these guys get past me first before I try to make any jumps. Now, the beginning of this part is the hardest uh, part because you've got, you know, sometimes you'll have two floating spiky balls at once. And uh, when you've got two on screen, it's very difficult to deal with them because, again, you can only shoot one projectile out at once. Uh, very aggravating. Alright, so let's just wait here. And there is a, a invisible wall about halfway. Ooh, I got very lucky there. Very, very lucky. There's an invisible wall about halfway uh, down the screen with Hyde, so you can only go so far. This is as far as I can go. Um, so you don't want to try to jump until you know you can make the platform. Otherwise, you'll find yourself hitting that invisible wall, and then um, it will just fall down and die, and have to do this all over again. So we're getting close to the end here. Unfortunately, my health bar is low, which is not ideal. I basically just keep slamming into these guys, and there's really nothing I can do about it in a lot of cases. Anyone? Okay, I was gonna say, <laughs> where are the enemies at? See, what I really would like to do is uh, switch back to Jekyll, but that is definitely not gonna happen. It's unfortunately not gonna happen. When you hear the music change, you know you're getting close, and so we're very close. And uh, it does get fairly tense here at the end because, again, just look at my health bar. It's very, very low. We're very, very close to getting a one credit clear in the game, which I've never done before. Um, but I will not be surprised if I die here and have to do it over again. That was very close as well. Oh, 
Alright, so this is the end. So we're just going to time our attacks here. I just wait for this guy to appear and then attack. Kind of like so. And just kind of hope for the best. Oh, not good. Took a hit. Now, you can also shoot his projectiles, and sometimes that'll build your meter back up. The goal is to build our meter back up. And we got it. Wow. We just got a one credit clear on Jekyll and Hyde. Well, we're not actually done yet. <laughs> the game doesn't end here. You'll notice that the guy that we just attacked... He's actually impaled on the, uh, the cross above now, which is interesting. That actually uh, comes back on the ending. All right, so back to Jekyll. And now there won't be any enemies. We just have a nice cozy stroll to the end of the game. So we basically just enjoy our walk. Um, <laughs> From here on out, I, I was actually, that was very close, very tense. Um, I always get to that boss with pretty much no health, and so it's always fairly tense for me. Um, the thing is, like, you know, the boss isn't really hard, but, you know, the game is just so inconsistent with how much damage it, deal, it deals. Like, I took, I think I took multiple hits on that guy, but I didn't actually lose any health. Um, whereas other times I barely take any hits and yet I lose a ton of health. It's just really inconsistent and um, You know honestly a little frustrating too, but um, You know I'm glad it worked out the way it did that is uh, definitely a nice solid playthrough uh, That I'm very happy with I probably won't get another one like that anytime soon <laughs> If I happen to go back to this game um, I'm very interested to try the Japanese version though, so sometime in the, in the near future, maybe sometime in October, maybe, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think, maybe I'll, I've got stream ideas for October, but I, I'm not entirely sure exactly what I'm going to do, uh, 100% yet, so there is a slim chance I might be able to come back and do some spooky NES games or something like that, and then try to do, uh, the Japanese Jekyll and Hyde on that, that could be interesting, we could definitely try to mess around with that. So we're actually getting close to the end here. Just jump up these stairs. Nothing, nothing special here. Again, there's nothing else to do. This is, uh, this is it. This is the whole game. Um, so if I did not turn into Hyde and I did not kill that boss, uh, there would be enemies and all sorts of stuff here that I would have to contend with. But since I destroyed the boss, there are, there's no one. The town's empty, it seems. And here we go. Yeah, it's actually kind of interesting to think about because Hyde travels the same path as Jekyll, but his part with the church is much higher than uh, Jekyll's is. And here we go, this is the ending. So we just beat Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde for the NES, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So. Now, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. Um, it was definitely interesting learning this game, very frustrating learning this game. Um, and it's I'm not sure if it's the sort of thing where I'd recommend you go out of your way to try to learn this game. But I do think it is interesting knowing the mechanics of this game. And, um, you know, uh, it is just mechanically very interesting. I don't think it's a great game. Um, I understand why it gets the flack it does. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm glad to have this one under my belt, to be able to say, like, I've gone all the way through the game multiple times, and I understand how it works, and so, um, I don't think it's, like, really a, a bad game in the way that people usually make it out to be, it's just a very unique and interesting game, and definitely not one for everybody, it is definitely not for everybody, but it is a playable game, once you learn the rules and you learn, uh, how the game works, it is interesting, it is very interesting, so... But, uh, yeah, that is the end of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and, uh, this is actually my first Let's Play for October of 2019, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this playthrough and enjoyed this start of Let's Plays in October. Ooh, spooky. 
Um, I'm gonna try to actually raise my upload count in this month. So, uh, you know, hopefully I can uh, pump out a Let's Play every week. So uh, check your calendars, uh, for, well, not calendars, but set your clocks for Sunday mornings uh, when I upload or post my videos. Uh, likewise with Patreon backers and YouTube channel members. So yeah, hopefully we'll get ourselves some uh, some fun Let's Plays um, more frequently this uh, this October. So but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed my video, feel free to give it a thumbs up or thumbs down or whatever. Uh, if you're new to my channel, definitely consider subscribing. I've got a lot of Let's Plays here and many, many more to come. And uh, for everyone else already subbed, thanks for your usual support and continued support. And I'm just rambling now. So until the next one, take it easy.